Hello and welcome to episode one of Daily Draft Logs. We're looking at a Kaldheim traditional draft. This was kind of day one of the format. Uh, this deck went two and one, so we'll see what I was up to early in the format here and see if there's anything we would change uh, now that it's week two or wherever we are. Um, Arena, unfortunately, not showing first picks, so uh, we don't get to see uh, what was in contention here, but we do see that we selected Blood Sky Berserker, first overall, which I think is a reasonable first pick. Uh, I don't think black is among the strongest colors. Uh, it seems like blue, green, and red are kind of up there, and, and uh, black and white not as much, but uh, the colors seem fairly balanced, uh, all that being said, and this is a great reason to get into black and try to play an aggressive black-red deck or, or black-white deck. So, selected Blood Sky Berserker first. Let's see what's in pick two. Uh, we get past a pretty sweet one here, Waking the Trolls. Pretty bomb rare. I've been crushed by this a few times, uh, especially if you can ramp into this with like a Glittering Frost or a um, uh, Sculptor of Winter that untaps a snow land. Uh, you know, destroying their land, uh, you know, and then ramping yourself and, and then creating like two or three 4-4 four, four trolls is usually uh, pretty backbreaking for the opponent. So uh, this is a very, very excellent card. It's going to be hard to beat. Uh, other cards in consideration, there's not a whole lot going on in this pack. Uh, Behold the Multiverse would be the next card I'd be looking at here uh, as the best blue common, and card draw being very, very powerful in this format that tends to get grindy and, and uh, go to the late game. If we wanted to stay black, we would take Jarl of the Forsaken, but I don't think that's worth it um, when we've got an, an, a bomb rare or like you know a, a top common in the pack. Um, so we're not going to hang on to to black this pick, and I believe we selected the rare, and we did. All right, on to pick three. Uh, cards in contention in this pack. We've got a, a Snow Duel, which probably this early in the format I wasn't considering, but um, being able to take these early, uh, especially the ones that tap for multiple colors, and especially the ones that tap for uh, green, red, or blue, or black, I guess, basically the non-white ones, uh, set yourself up to to pick up some really really powerful stuff later in the draft, and, and uh, if you get enough of these, you know you can play pretty much anything that you open as a five color deck, and uh, you know you'll get some snow payoffs like Priest of the Haunted Edge or um, Ice Hide Troll that uh, nobody else is really looking at. So in terms of of our pick here, I think I would be on the Highland Forest, especially because we have a very good red green rare, um, and we could try to wheel. Sculptor of Winter and uh, see if we can end up some kind of red green based uh, or green blue splash red based type of snow deck. So my pick here would be Highland Forest. Let's see what we did choose. Oh, we did choose the duel. There you go. All right, pick four. Uh, so we've got a red green uncommon land that's kind of jumping off the page to me, but I actually not that big a fan of this card. Seven mana, including this land itself, in order to activate is kind of a lot. Uh, the 4-4 that you get has Trample. This is not a bad card, but this is a card I'd be looking to take when we know we're for sure green-red. Uh, and I don't think I'd pick it up here, although this pack is not super strong. Uh, I think the best card for us is going to be Elven Bow. Uh, essentially a 3-mana 2-3 reach, and then when it dies, it leaves this sweet equipment behind. Um, just the, the, These equipments have kind of overperformed, especially the red one. Uh, the green one here, Elven Bow, and the black one's been pretty sweet too, um, and the blue one's been pretty sweet. It's pretty much the non non white, non white is kind of the theme with this set, I guess. Uh, so I'd be on Elven Bow here. Okay, we did take the uncommon land. I think I would. I think I would not make that pick now. Um, you know, it's fine because we're trying to be in these colors and we're really trying to play Waking the Trolls. But uh, I think we could expect to wheel this. Uh, you know, if nobody else is in our color pair. Um, and I think the bow is, is kind of just a better card on balance. Okay, uh, next pick here. I think this would be a pretty easy path to the world tree for me. Uh, at this point in the format, this is going to let us splash very easily. Activating this is not out of the question, and um, it's going to help us draw and hit our land drops so that we can cast Waking the Trolls, which is uh, what we're most interested in doing at this point in the draft. Uh, other cards here... Uh, snow Duel, I'm not really looking at. White and red are very minimal snow colors, so I don't think we would want to take that here, although you could make an argument for it. Um, 
And uh, Ravenous Lindworm's another pretty sweet one. Uh, kind of looks unassuming, but you know it's pretty backbreaking when you cast this against an aggro deck, and, and then it kind of quickly closes out the game. So uh, I'm on Path to the World Tree here. All right, and we took the Lindworm. So this is definitely a, a pick I would have made the other way at this point in the format. But early in the format, not really knowing how good you know two mana find a land is, and you know probably thinking that five color thing isn't going to happen. Uh, we took the worm and I, I, you know, I suppose it's a fine pick. Pick six. Um, so we've got another uncommon tap land. This is going to be pretty tough to play for us. Uh, if we'd taken path to the world tree, we could consider it. But even then double white is very, very tough. Uh, so I don't think we're on that land at all. Pack's pretty weak. Um, um, the cards I'm looking at here are Masked Vandal, believe it or not, uh, which is definitely not what we took because I was didn't even know this card <laughs> really existed early in the format, but there's a lot of targets for it. Uh, it comes down against an aggro deck early and just blocks for you. Um, but man, if you're exiling, um, you know, like a, like a replicating ring uh, or a vehicle or uh, like an equipment with a rune attached to it, you're feeling pretty good. And there's a couple of artifact creatures in the set too that you can get with this. And, and I mean a saga like waking the trolls being able to just just get rid of that for two mana and leaves behind a uh, one three bodies pretty nice so that actually might be the pick out of this pack um i can see an argument for craven hulk just wanting to beat down but uh our curve is pretty high right now with two six drops so um i think i'd be on the vandal over the glade walker which is just a reasonable two drop um raven is also fine but we're not in blue yet, and uh, I think I take the Vandal here. I'm pretty pretty sure we didn't do that. Yeah, we took the Raven. I mean, three mana, uh, or sorry, four mana, three three flying. Uh, you know, with Fortel looks super sweet at the beginning of the format, and it is a good card. But it has not really performed quite as well as as uh, as you would have thought. But we took it here. Let's see what's next. All right, another worm. Um, so I'm assuming we probably took that uh, at this point. You know, having three six drops is pretty rough, so I would probably be looking to grab the Glade Walker here, I think. Uh, Carter's not bad. It's a four drop, and it's in black and red, and we're, you know, not really sure if we're going to be playing any black or not. And this card kind of asks you to, you know, play a low curve aggro deck, but... Um, I mean, I think it's a powerful card, and I, I do like playing low-curve aggro decks, so I can see that being in, in contention here. Um, so, this is a bit of a toss-up. Taking a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two is not great either. I mean, you can counter on the Raven. That's pretty nice. Um, taking another 6-drop isn't great. So, yeah, this is a pretty tough one. I could see just taking the Snowland and, and trying to trying to build up a collection of those and try to wheel some sweet snow payoffs. So, um, let's see what we took. Okay. We did take Carter. Um, again, very early in the format. I was probably trying to experiment and just see what cards were good and try the uncommons out. So we took Carter. So now our opinion is, um, uh, seeing this pack that, you know, green is not really flowing to us. Um, or at least that's the way it would appear. It looks like we're seeing some good red cards here with Axe Guard Cavalry, Breakneck Berserker. Um, so, you know, anytime I'm in a situation like this where there's just not much happening in the pack, uh, I'm going to try and take a low-cost card that's in a color we're likely to play. So at the moment, it looks like we're most likely to either play red-green or red-black or some combination of those three colors, which means red is... Uh, kind of what you consider to be the pivot color in our pool here. So um, I'm looking at Axe Guard Cavalry as just a good two drop, get on board, get aggressive, uh, can double trigger uh, the Berserker later in the game with another two drop. Uh, you know, you just want to get a board advantage and crush people with uh, Carter. So picking up Axe Guard Cavalry here, and that is what we chose. And... First one, why not the second? Uh, Rhymewood Falls, though, this late is not going to happen nowadays, but uh, this is the best Snowland, so this is the first pickable card, and I could still see an argument for just taking it here and trying to be, you know, red, green, blue, 
uh, Snow. So Rhymewood Falls might be the correct pick out of this pack, but I think at this point um, I was probably blinders on just playing aggro, wanted to make this this uh, Blood Sky Berserker work. So let's see what we took. And we did take the Cavalry. All right, let's quickly go through the rest of these here. Uh, take a Raise the Draugr. Um, I can see an argument for Squash here. Five mana is a lot. We don't have any Giants yet. Um, so, you know, I don't mind Raise here as a way to sort of grind. We've got uh, Double Cavalry. Uh, and we actually have four cards that are of the Berserker uh, type. So that means that we're going to be able to draw two with this pretty reliably if we pick up like two or three more Berserkers, which red and black have a ton of. So I like this pick. Uh, pretty much a bunch of nothing here. We just took a combat trick that we might play in green. Nothing. Okay, wield path the world tree. That'll never happen nowadays. And seize the spoils. Okay, and a bunch of nothing. Okay, sorry. Uh, I should turn the pick off. So we take... Uh, old Growth Troll out of this pack. Again, uh, early in the format, so I'm probably wanting to try the rares out. This card does not seem very good to me. Triple green is going to be really hard to uh, cast on curve, so you're probably looking at this as like a, you know, a turn five or six play. Uh, and even then, you're going to need to have fixing like Path to the World Tree, uh, which keeps coming up here, uh, or, you know, Glittering Frost or something to make sure you actually have triple green. That's pretty hard to do. Um, you know, 4-4 four, four Trample is fine, but on turn 5 or 6, it's not going to be as impactful as turn 3, which is, again, pretty unlikely with this card. Um, then when it dies, it enchants a forest, adds a couple of, of extra mana for you, and then sacks in and becomes a tapped 4-4 uh, four, four with Trample. So it's a 4-4 four, four that slowly dies into a 4-4. Four, four. Um, so anyways, uh, we took it here, I guess, you know, Keeping the uh, the dream alive of playing Waking the Trolls, which, you know, makes some sense to me. Uh, again, there's a Glittering Frost and a Path here. I could see those both being in contention as well, as long, along with this Volatile Fjord or a Shimmer Drift Veil, actually, might even just be the straight-up pick because we're a little bit confused as to what our, our colors are. We kind of think we're red-black, but maybe we're red-green. Who knows? Uh, you know, this is going to go in every deck you draft and uh, fix your mana for you. So I think I actually... After having talked it out, I'd take Shimmer Drift Fail, but we took uh, took the rare. So let's move on. Pick two. Oh, boy. We got a sweet red rare here. Good aggressive card. Just nugs them for two every turn and sometimes is attacking them for five. So I like that as the pickup here. Uh, whether or not we end up red-green or I still think we're more likely to be red-black um, just because Old Growth Troll is so hard to cast. Uh, and we do have, uh, you know, some good aggressive stuff going on. Uh, I think this would be a pretty easy Quake Bringer. There's another Shimmer Drift Fail if we want to fix mana. And there's a Sculptor of Winter if we're, if we're really wanting to do the snow thing. But given how many snow lands we pass, we only have the one, um, it becomes difficult to pick up these snow paths. So uh, let's see what we took. Poison the Cup. Interesting. Okay. Um... That's funny, that wasn't even on my radar. I mean, great removal spell. Best, maybe the best black on, black uncommon. So maybe I should have should have noticed that. But uh, yeah, solid solid pickup as well. But I think I'd be on the Quakebringer um, or even the fixing here. Just having good mana is so important. And removal is, is important, but repeatable stuff and card advantage is, I think, more so important. You can stick a threat like this and just sit back and, you know, just let it wail on your opponent and uh, not really worry about it. But, yeah, Poison the Cup, strong card. So we took it here. All right, so leaning back into the black direction now. Uh, there's a snow mountain. We don't have anything that really wants that. So I think the snow train has kind of passed, has left the station, if you will. Um, so... You know, the couple of cards I'm looking for here, uh, looking at here, not the rare, I don't think, because uh, we're not in blue. Um, this 3-2 Haster, I mean, if we're just trying to aggro them out, it's totally fine. Uh, we could look to wheel Demonic Gifts. This card is actually pretty sweet, and people don't play around it. When you have boasters, uh, or, you know, you're just really pressuring your opponent, this is kind of like a, you know, not as good run amok. 
Um, could see an argument for struggle for Skemfar here as well as just a good interactive removal spell. Um, we're kind of split between green and black, and our green is now looking worse than our black to me. If we consider <clears throat> old growth troll not to be playable, uh, roots and snakeskin veil are, you know, not likely to make our deck. So I think I want to take, um, Breakneck Berserker here, believe it or not. Let's see what we chose. Okay, we did take the struggle. It makes sense. Trying to play the, uh, trying to play the rare, and I, I, I respect that. So we took struggle. Um. Okay. So maybe we're back on, uh, red green. So we're kind of waffling a little bit, but you know we're not in too too much trouble, just yet. Um, this pack does not have a ton going on. A snow forest is kind of a nice thing to see here. Uh, we do have a path. You know, we could try to wheel that ice hide troll that was in the previous pack. Um, don't think we're taking either of these dual lands. Uh, sorry, not dual lands. Uh, sacrifice uncommon lands. And in terms of our red black prospects, we've got another 3 2 haste, breakneck berserker. We've got infernal pet, which is not really a card that I'm interested in playing uh and we've got a squash as just a solid uh kind of role player removal spell so i think given that we don't have any snow payoffs i'm off of the forest i think i'm on either squash or the three two haste uh let's see what we took okay we took infernal pet i i would not make that pick now um but you know it does go with blood sky berserker um, and some of the two drops that we've drafted. So um, I, I think of the two, I'd just rather have Breakneck Berserker. Just start attacking them right away. Don't have to wait around to uh, to double spell to make your, your card good. Uh, all right, next. Um, Tormentor's Helm, pretty sweet one. We could grab that here if we're as aggro as I think it looks like we want to be. Uh, you know, cards that cost one mana are pretty sweet with both Infernal Pet and Blood Sky Berserker. And equipping this uh, is actually pretty pretty nice. Like, plus one, plus one matters. Uh, dealing one damage to defending player matters. Like, if you can get them down to, you know, a sub-10 life total in the first handful of turns, uh, you know, this starts to become a real problem for them because they've got to trade off with, their creature, with, uh, with your creature, otherwise they're taking, like, four damage. Uh, and then even when they do, they're still taking one damage. So, you know, uh, this is pretty sweet. Obviously, we've got a great card here in Feed the Serpent, uh, but I actually think this pick is somewhat close. I'm, I'm thinking you take the Feed here, try to wheel the Helm, but four mana's a lot, double black's a lot. Um, nothing in green here, so we're not really considering that. We don't have enough snow to make Priest work, uh, and I guess there's Provoke the Trolls as well. So, you know, it's even kind of funny. It's like between Feed and Provoke, I could see Provoke being the correct pick because single red makes it easier to cast. Um, it's unlikely that we're going to get to use the plus five, plus O side of it, but uh, that could come into effect. So any one of these three cards would be reasonable. But I think I think it's reasonable to just take Feed, try to wield a helmet. Um, and that's what we did. All right, next pick. We'll just take another cavalry, I think. Uh, I like the Elder Fang Disciple a good amount, but, um, you know, 1-1 one, one is just not a stat line that's going to work in a deck that's trying to beat down. So we'll just take a cavalry, try to give Carter haste, uh, <laughs> and just have good cards on two and, and just try to beat down. That's what we did. All right, and uh, now we're starting to see some cards in our in our black red color pair, which is pretty nice. There was definitely a snow deck available here. We could have picked up some lands, picked up some, some trolls and stuff and, and done a pretty cool thing that way. But I think that that ship is kind of sailing here. Uh, so we're either taking a dual land or a firewalker. This is pretty close. Um, we're in a spot here where I think we need creatures pretty badly because we're going to be dropping some of these green cards. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we only have six creatures at the moment that we're playing if we're black red um, and even fewer if we're red green. So I think we're in a spot where we actually just need to take Firewalker to make sure we have enough creatures. And that's what we did. All right. And pack two, pick eight, another cavalry. Pretty easy here. We've got no snow synergy, so we're not going to take the swamp. 
another cavalry. Um, and this is kind of a gift uh, here, super late. Uh, pack two, pick nine. We get to pick up a shimmer drift veil to have fixing uh, for whatever color pair we end up with, be it black, red, or black, green. Feels like we're leaning black, red, but we don't have to choose. We just take shimmer drift veil and feel good. All right, let's get through the last uh, picks here. Wheel Yarl of the Forsaken. That's a really nice one uh, to trigger your Blood Sky Berserker. It's pretty nice when you're just beating down um, and they have to decide uh, do they have a a run amok, do they have a combat trick or something? And then, you know, sometimes they're just kind of forced to block and see if you have it. And uh, you kind of get to play as though you do have a combat trick, even when you don't with this creature. Um, and then sometimes you just flash it in uh, for two mana, you know, just to trigger your uh, your Berserk or whatever. So card's pretty sweet, and we took it here. And real nice to see a demonic gift. We have no combat tricks yet, so uh, this is pretty important to pick up for us. 3-2 haste, nice. And we did wheel the Tormentor's Helm, perfect. So that's going to slot right in real nicely. Disdainful Stroke, Shackles, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so um, definitely going to be Black Red Agra at this point, I think. And uh, we'll see what we, we grab here. So uh, kind of was showing this earlier, but we took Turgrid God of Fright, which um, I think you just look at this as... Uh, the other side of the card, actually, Turgrid's Lantern, which I, I can't show on this website, but uh, this is the, the one where you, you tap it and it forces them to sack a permanent, discard a card, or lose three life, and you can untap it for three and a black. Um, that card has been surprisingly good and, and can certainly get there and, and push into a late game. Um, five mana, four, five uh, menace is also super good, so uh, we'll grab that here. And... Oh, yeah. Get past Draugr Necromancer. This card's been pretty sweet. Four mana, four, four is a great stat line. Uh, and then, you know, if you're facing a black or red deck, you just get to cast their cards that die whenever this is in play. And, I mean, if you think about it, like, you should be should be facing, um, you know, black or red uh, about, like, 20% of the time each if all the colors are rel roughly equal, which they are, which means, um, you know... 40% of the time, if my math is correct, you're going to be facing black or red. Um, so, you know, this is this is a real card. And then, of course, if you have snow mana, which we have a little bit of, then you get to um, utilize that to cast spells of any color. So, uh, card's super powerful. We snap it up. Snap up another Blood Sky Berserker. Pretty easy pick. This is exactly what our deck's trying to do. Um, and now we get a shot at a, another Feed the Serpent or a Tuscary Firewalker. I think we take Feed here, try to wheel the Firewalker. Um, but depending on our creature count, I could see Firewalker being the correct pick since we already have a Poison the Cup and um, a Feed the Serpent already. Um, so I think it's probably still Feed, but could be close. And it is Feed. Another Tormentor's Helm over pretty much nothing. Hailstorm Valkyrie, we can't really play. We don't have enough snow. You need, like, eight, excuse me, sources of snow. Um, so we're not going to take that. We'll take the helm. Oh, we did take it. No. Okay, well, that definitely didn't make our deck and was was a, was a mistake to take. Uh, should have taken the helm. This pack has nothing we're interested in. Uh, we can snap up a village rights as some card draw, but we don't even really need it because we've already got raised the Draugr. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not really trying to sacrifice our own stuff. We're trying to just beat down and... Uh, and uh, play combat tricks and, and win that way. But that's what we'll take here. It's the only card in the pack. Uh, Firewalker, easy pickup. We need creatures, and it's a pretty good one. Replaces itself a good amount of the time. Uh, squash here for us. Ooh, took Longboat. I don't like that pick. Uh, I haven't really seen this card be any good, and we're not at the point where we're, like, really needing creatures. So I would have taken... Squash here. To be fair, we're probably not playing either of these cards because our removal is already pretty good, but um, I think Squash is the pick there for what it's worth. So uh, if we'd taken the second helm, I wouldn't be looking at Gold Vein pick, but since we didn't, I kind of am, but I think uh, it's still Tuscary Firewalker here as a, a good creature that's going to replace itself and give it haste with cavalry. We've only got the one Demonic Gifts. This is a card that's very good with combat tricks like Run Amok and uh, Demonic Gifts. Um, so we're hoping to see another combat trick when we uh, pick that up, and we do. All right, and here we could 
take Carfell Kennelmaster, which is a card I haven't really respected all that much, but uh, it's it's pretty good. Like we don't have any fives yet outside of Turgrid. Uh, we have a lot of ways to give it haste, which is quite nice. So it can target itself, become a, a five four. Uh, indestructible. So I, I think I like that as the pick here. Uh, and we did take it, so there you go. Right on. A uh, bunch of nothing. We take Wither Crown. The card's not playable. Recruiter, not playable. Rider, not playable. Okay. So um, there we go. So the build we end up going with um, lots of two drops. Double Blood Sky Berserker, four cavalry. Actually, I could use another two drop creature or two, but that's okay. Um, and some nice threes here. Infernal Pet, not the best, but we've got some great removal. Feed the Serpent, Poison, poison the Cup. Carter is going to do some work for us. Jarl, and we've got a couple of nice rares too. So so kind of just uh, feels like we kind of bumbled into this deck, but we prioritized uh, aggressive cards in two drops, and, uh, you know, we play, play 17 land. We have a duel. Uh, I think there's an argument to not play that... Uh, village rights. And I'm just wondering if there's anything else we could have put in. Obviously, Hailstorm Valkyrie doesn't make the deck. That's kind of a glaring pick, right? We never had enough snow to make this happen. We chose it anyways. Uh, and that could have been a second Tormentor's Helm, which would have been excellent in this deck. So, I think if, we, if I could change anything, it would be... Yeah, there's not really anything to replace that, that village rights. But if I could change anything, it would be picking uh, uh, Valkyrie over the second Helm. So, there you go. This deck went 2-1. and one. Uh, in traditional draft. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like me to review one of your draft logs, just post it in the comments uh, or uh, post it in, di uh, in my Discord channel, which there'll be a link to, uh, or uh, message me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.